Hello, everybody, and welcome to Teal Talks, where we have bold, intelligent conversations with innovators, leaders, and influencers from around the world. I'm Samantha Harris. You may know me from hosting eight seasons of Dancing with the Stars and my many years on Entertainment Tonight, but I'm also a cancer thriver. I was diagnosed in 2014 with stage two invasive breast cancer. I underwent a double mastectomy. And since my diagnosis, I have become not only a fierce advocate for living your healthiest healthy life possible to reduce your risk of cancer, but also I went on a research journey to uncover how we can take even better control of our well being. And that's why I'm here today to talk about the latest advances in prevention. So, joining me to discuss all of that and so much more, Dr. Laura Makaroff, Senior Vice President for Prevention and Early Detection at American Cancer Society, Dr. Scott Ebbinghaus, Vice President and Therapeutic Area Head in Late Stage Oncology at Merck also known as MSD outside the US and Canada, and Steve Keefe, Associate Vice President of Global Clinical Development in Oncology at Merck. And all of you, I appreciate you so much for being here, for your insight, for all that you can bring today. And I wanna just jump right in because we have so much to talk about today. So Dr. Makaroff, I'm gonna start with you. When it comes to preventing cancer, what do we know about what truly reduces our risk? Sure, that's a really good question. And you know, certainly we're learning so much really every day about what is it that makes cancer prevention work and what are the strategies that help us all reduce our risk of cancer. But there are some things that we already know. So we know that up to 18% of all cancers diagnosed in the US are related to some combination of a not healthy body weight or excess alcohol consumption or an unhealthy diet or a smoking. And those things together, if we all follow a healthy lifestyle by eating right, making good choices in the foods that we take in, maintaining a healthy body weight, staying physically active, using alcohol in moderation and not smoking, we can really do a lot to reduce our risk of cancer and help prevent it. And it sounds like there really is so much within our power to be able to do. Um, but another big factor here is related to screenings and tests for early detection. Uh, there's been a big decline in cancer screenings ever since the pandemic started. And Steve, what's stopping people from getting screened and how can we reverse this trend and just get people right back there in the doctor's office? During the early stages of the pandemic, the diagnosis of cancer in many countries fell precipitously. And also this appears to have been linked to a dramatic reduction in the amount of screening. Consider that in Belgium, for instance, over the first two years of the pandemic, the diagnosis of invasive cancers fell by 44%. And in 2020 in Spain, the number of new diagnoses was 34% lower than, than expected. Some people say that the reason for this uh, massive decline in screening, and it certainly stands to reason, uh, was because people were worried about getting into the, uh, into the clinic with the pandemic. And certainly also some of the restrictions that were placed to control the pandemic had an impact on people getting into the office. Dr. Ebbinghaus, I'm gonna to go to you for this one because research continues to show that screenings can increase the chances of finding certain cancers early. So how much more dangerous is it to be diagnosed late? It's important to remember that not all cancers are, are fatal cancers. And particularly, um, even in a, a, a cancer that's often fatal, if you catch it early, you can treat it. So it's really important that you find it, that you find it early. And Dr. Mar Makaroff, what's currently being done to increase the number of people getting screened? Yeah, certainly. Um, so the pandemic had really maybe an unprecedented impact on screening across the U.S. as well as around the globe. We continue to be concerned about disparities in communities where the recovery from the pandemic and getting back on track with screening has not been as swift. But I think we've seen, seen a lot of progress. For example, here in the United States at the American Cancer Society, we kicked off kind of a multifaceted initiative early last year, 2021, kind of in the middle of where we were with the pandemic then, to, to start to address this issue and help people get back on track with screening. So knowing that it would take really um, a group effort with lots of partners. Um, so we had a national consortium to bring together thought leaders in the US and really set the stage for some further recommendations and strategies to continue to help the community know about 
cancer screening and the importance of that help people get back to their healthcare provider and their medical home to get their screenings done, have the right follow-up care after that. And that's come through various research activities, some activities within communities directly with health systems to do quality improvement work and systems change to help uh, build better systems of care so that cancer screening gets done on time for everybody who's eligible, as well as some really important work um, on social media and communicating that way um, through a Get Screened campaigns. So I'm going to go back to you for another question here, Dr. Makroff, but what should people know about today's cancer screenings and how effective they are? Because my mammogram was many years ago. I think it was 2D, not 3D. And there's so many advancements every year that we're making. So a couple things to talk about when we think about cancer screening. So number one, no screening test is 100% accurate. So really having some awareness of your body and any changes is another important piece to this puzzle. I think the other important part of all of this is that when we think about cancer screening, we're not just talking about one test. Like this is actually fairly complex. Like we don't have a cancer screening test for every cancer out there or every cancer we know about, but we have some and we have some very good ones. So we talk about breast cancer screening, colon cancer screening, cervical cancer, lung cancer, and prostate cancer. Each of those screening tests has an eligible population. So you wanna know your age and your risk factors and whether you're, what what tests are right for you. Um, So that's important to have a conversation with your um, physician or other healthcare provider about that, to know which tests are right for you when you fit an average risk category. And the second piece of this I think is really important also is that we have to remember that there's some people who fit a high risk category. And so that could be that you have family history of cancer, or you might have any, some other inherited condition, or you might need to start screening earlier or do a different kind of screening test than the average risk population. So again, that's an important topic to bring up with your doctor um, and make sure that you as the patient know to ask the right questions and so that your doctor can help you um, understand if you need to start screening earlier or have a different kind of screening test because you fit a higher risk category. So Dr. Ebbinghaus, what can you tell us about some of the new and improved screening options being used and how can they help catch cancer in earlier stages? Well, I think um, there's been a lot of important research that's sort of still ongoing and is is really showing that we can improve, you know, technology to detect cancer early. I think in three categories, imaging technologies, self-sampling, which can improve compliance and convenience, and then blood tests that can actually detect cancer early in in the blood. And so if you think about uh, mammography, boy, that's come a long way over time. And there's a lot of research efforts going on that are are still intended to improve conventional mammography, including digital mammography, uh, things like uh, MRI, uh, which is magnetic resonance imaging, uh, positron emission tomography or PET scanning, And all of those things are intended to improve the way that we can uh, have early detection of breast cancer, a lot of research going on. Um, Another example is in self-sampling. And then lastly, um, blood tests, tests that can detect cancer cells in the blood, for example, are an increasingly important topic of research. When a cancer is diagnosed early, it's important to know whether there's a risk of it coming back later. That can provide uh, important information about whether uh, certain treatments may or may not be useful after after a cancer surgery is done. So those are some really important forms of cancer research that I think have really helped to improve um, early detection and early risk stratification for cancers. Well, it gives me so much hope. I know I lost my dad when he was just 50, uh, more than 25 years ago to colon cancer. Uh, But then of course the screenings have gotten so much better And I also want to ask all three of you, have we learned anything during the pandemic that could lead to better screening practices as we go forward in the future? And uh, we'll go ahead and Steve, start with you. I think we've learned that uh, even though the the sort of um, the average, if you will, of kind of outreach or success of screening before the pandemic, you know, might have been better than it was. It's not the it's not the case for for every you know major group in society, and you know we saw that I think in the pandemic too because there were a number of different important um, subsets of our population that that suffered inordinately from the pandemic, and I think we see that with screening too. So I think that one thing that that I have been struck by uh, looking at the pandemic and thinking about what we need to do in screening is we need to 
take uh, a tailored approach. We need to find the way to get screening into a given community in a way that works with the folks in that community. Uh, that's that's I think one thing that that was that's very different from how I used to see it before the pandemic started. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Makarov. This pandemic has taught us all so many things and maybe taught us, you know, so much about challenges, but I think there have been some silver linings. One in the area of cancer screening is this notion of at-home cancer screening. One place where we can do at-home cancer screening already is with colon cancer screening and at-home stool tests. And we have seen through the pandemic this opportunity to get screening tests done at home. And so being able to mail a stool-based test to a patient's home or take it there somehow, um, and the patient's able to do the test and get the results, like that's that has been, you know, I think innovative in a sense is the and the spread of it. Stool-based testing has been a part of colon cancer screening guidelines for some time now, but I think the pandemic has offered us an opportunity to um, utilize it better and more. Thank you so much, Dr. Ebbinghaus. Well, I think one of the things that the pandemic's taught us is that we can reach our patients even if they can't come into the doctor's office. Um, we've seen even in complicated uh, cases in advanced oncology uh, practice where we're increasingly using telemedicine to check up on patients um, when they're not able to come into the office. And I think that practice is probably here to stay and to be able to be used. So you can imagine that in a, in a, in a, in a healthier, less symptomatic population where you're trying to get screenings done, that um, being able to leverage telemedicine to counsel patients and to sort of arrange for testing and that sort of thing could really help with cancer screenings. I think that's one of the takeaways from the pandemic that, uh, that I'd emphasize. Well, thank you so much, all of you, for your incredible work that you continue to do in oncology. And thank you especially for being here to join us on Tilt Talks.